So uh, Electric Hemp is uh, a company which I founded um, with some other guys. We make basically uh, a, a way to connect any device to the internet. It's kind of uh, internet connectivity as a service. Up higher, you can hear me now. So basically, um, what we noticed, what I noticed is there are a lot of internet connected devices, a lot of people trying to make these things now. Um, and everyone's building their own vertical stack and you know they're having to do their own hardware, their own software, their own service to connect to and you get a lot of fragmentation, the products aren't necessarily great, they spend so much time trying to do networking that they don't actually get a working system. Um, and so we came up with a really, really simple solution. Uh, everything from hardware to the embedded firmware to the actual service. And basically what we ended up with is something which looks like this. So it looks like an SD card. It actually has Wi-Fi and a processor in it with a virtual machine. And how it works is you plug it into a device. People build devices with sockets. It IDs the device and pulls the software to run that device down into the VM inside here and runs it. So it's like universal connectivity. Just uses standard Wi-Fi. Uh, we have a really cool way of doing Wi-Fi configuration. There's something funny with... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's <laughs> yeah, see, see if I can do... See if Chrome works anyway. Chrome doesn't work either. Okay. Cool. Our website manages to break Mac OS. <laughs> this is cool. But I can just generally show you this stuff, even if you can't see it there. So we have some cool stuff like... Uh, here's an example. Here's a wall switch. This is just with batteries in for a demo. We, we plug a card in. It like flashes red. Eventually. Um, and we configure the Wi-Fi using our smartphones. So you can just start our app and we configure it like this. We just hold the screen up against it and it flashes. It takes about 10 seconds and sends all your Wi-Fi setup information optically, which means you need no buttons on the device, which makes them a lot easier to build. Um, at that point, it's going to connect and it's now going to be flashing green like that. So that one's flashing green. I would show you it on the screen, but it's a bit hard because yeah. <laughs> it's not working. Uh, but here's like another thing. Here is a power control. This is another device we made for demo. Um, there are lots of vendors working with us building these type of devices, but I can kind of show you how this stuff works. Like I have some lights here. This one's now flashing green. Oh, it did. we get we get something appearing. Cool, but the switch is somewhere off the screen, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I put this on the wrong account. Let's find another one. I might have put it on the wrong account. Hey. So then you can, I can actually just do this type of thing. I can just go connect these two together. Now these these are both connected securely through to Amazon AWS, actually over a Wi-Fi hotspot there. Uh, they're not talking to each other, but I can just control the light like this. This switch could be anywhere in the world. I have a web API, I can send stuff to it. And some of the cool things about this are you can do stuff like, if you're a device manufacturer, you don't need to do wireless approvals because our card is approved. You just put the slot in there. Um, the slot costs under a dollar to add to a product. Um, and then the actual card is retail 25. I mean, it's like much less than that if you're buying them to, to bundle with the product. And you can run pretty complex code on there. You can send arbitrary objects back and forth. You have a RESTful API. You know, you can actually make your entire product based on this. This We just provide basically the, the complete backend and connectivity for devices. Uh, so it's kind of, it just makes this stuff really, really, really simple. Um, I have some prettier demos. But we can demo them later in Q&A or whatever. Uh, but but you know, this the simplest type of device. This is like a the, the the unique stuff on this device is about I don't know 50 cents maybe. And this is a water level sensor. So uh, one of our employees has one of these in their their rabbit's water bottle, and it sends her a text every time the rabbit's getting low on water. Um, but you know the actual device is incredibly cheap. You could get a water bottle vendor put this slot in their device. People could use it, don't need to use it. You know, it's kind of up to them, but it becomes an internet-enabled device very, very cheaply. Um, and we kind of think that standardizing this platform and making, basically giving a web API to everything is the really way to get this more accepted. Because too many people just spend months or years building a wireless solution, and by the time they've got it, it's no better than anyone else's wireless solution, and they haven't actually got a product. They just have a wireless solution. So we're not making products. We're just making the wireless solution, which happens to include a bit of hardware. Um, but that's kind of basically it. I, I have other things, but you can pass data in and out. And some of the nice things are, you know, if I'm a vendor, I can do things like this. I can actually edit code uh, in the web browser. This is the code that's running on the switch. You can kind of see when I click it, you can see the log messages change. If I want to update the code on the switch, 
I can like go, I can click in here and that says update the boot message. Just put some stuff in there, save it. When I click play, you can see at the bottom it just reboot, it just sent that new software to the, the embedded processor inside the device over Wi-Fi. Over a secure connection, could be anywhere in the world. So you could debug a customer problem in Australia. Uh, if you have a million devices in the field, you can just do staged rollouts and do stuff you do, you know, with normal software, but do it with embedded software now. So it completely like erases that boundary. And also you can actually split your processing between the limited capabilities down here and the cloud side. So you can actually go, I can do some basic processing on a device. It can run off batteries for several years. Um, and then, you know, maybe al amalgamate the device, average it, stuff like that, whatever you need to, up within our cloud service on Amazon and then post it to another server when an event, a significant event happens or whatever. So it can be used for almost anything. You know, we've got people doing elder monitoring for it using motion sensors to detect. They have a cloud service which basically looks for anomalies in motion stuff. So people say, don't get into the kitchen in the morning, it's an unusual event. They can, they can tell the carers about it. Uh, we have people doing sort of irrigation systems, we have people doing power control and monitoring, the usual types sort of home automation things. Just almost anything, it's very, very open, it's an open platform, you know, you can make stuff and ship it without even talking to us if you want, uh, building all the back end. Great. Thank you. Should we, uh, let's do questions. Why use virtual machine instead of native code? Uh, sorry, why? Why use virtual machine instead of native code? Uh, because we need control over it so that if it crashes, the card doesn't crash. The card could be somewhere inaccessible. So using the virtual machine also lets people run, uh, I mean, we provide pretty good APIs, hardware APIs and, and other ones, but it just makes it much easier to support arbitrary third-party applications. It does limit performance very slightly, but actually not that much. So what exactly are you selling? Intellectual property or software? So what exactly we're selling, um, there's the cards. You can buy the cards for development. They're on sale at SparkFund. We've sold several thousand already. Um, we also sell the service, and the service has a subscription for if you are a commercial user. If you're a developer, it's free. If you're a commercial user, it works out to around two bucks a year, depending on what features you're looking for, or can be less if you pay in advance. But for that, you get the license of the blink up things, you get like the flashy screen thing to configure, which is the easiest Wi-Fi configuration, you get that for iOS and Android, um, and you get the service which involves like fleet monitoring, software upgrades, alerting, all these sort of configuration dashboards which, you know, are, are a big part of managing the large numbers of, of connected devices in the field, and obviously all the APIs and so on. Are you yeah. leveraging uh, UPnP or DLNLink? Uh, no. Uh, these do not do local connectivity, they go to the server. It's their mothership connected. So they go through NAT and everything like that. Otherwise you tend to get this really confusing bit where stuff works but not when you're in the house and people find this confusing. There's stuff in the future and we may, we may add that stuff in. Everything's capable but it's not, not used at the moment. Have you been working with any health providers? Do you see any medical applications? There are medical applications. We are working with some people who are using this for medical data logging and so on. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's kind of probably not health critical because it uses the internet. <laughs> Comcast goes down, and so do the people. Um, but but uh, but you know, there are plenty of things which aren't critical. They're just sort of like you know, getting ECG traces, getting uh, you know, um, blood pressure monitoring, and type of things like that, where it's, it's useful to have centralized data logging. And, you know, people like uh, why things have got those scales, which I bought one of. I was one of the things, reasons why I built it is it was a $170 bathroom scale, and it's and every time I step on it, it sends four bytes, pretty much, <laughs> to their service, and like it's pretty much a dollar each time so far. So establishing standards is a pretty big ordeal. Um, you're saying as long as somebody uh, builds that slot, that they can take your card and be good to go. Yeah, I mean, it, where are the specs for that slot? The specs for the slot are on our website. Um, it uses, there's no parts made by us that go into the device. There's an off-the-shelf unique ID chip, which is like 30 cents. Um, we're not trying to do the whole, you know, uh, say Zigbee have a whole lot of standards. It doesn't seem to have worked very well for them. We're making something which works really well for the consumer and really well for the vendor. Um, and we believe that's kind of like the best way. And we, the standardization is now not in the home at an at a, at a air communication level. The standardization is now a web API 
because those are actually pretty flexible and they're very easy to change and update even after you've shipped product. If you have a Zigbee smart energy profile or something and there's a bug in it, it's very hard to update that. No? Any other questions? Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.